All right, what's going on? Yesterday, I was at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art and saw this famous painting by Gerhard Richter. He's a famous German artist. And as with all modern art, you kind of look at it and think, you know, like, hey, I could do that. Like, uh, but this painting is actually quite striking. It's very large. It's a grid of random colors. And I think it's a great opportunity to get hacking in P5JS just to see how to build a grid system with this uh, equal spacing between each cell. And then also just a little bit of exploration in color. We'll look at RGB as well as HSB today. All right, let's have a look at the code. Hey there, Webbay. So we're just using the P5JS editor today. I will put a Webflow clonable down in the description if you want to check out how to use this as a website background or something like that. Anyways, let's get started. We have our setup and draw functions. And within setup, we're creating the canvas and it's just going to take up the entire window width and the entire window height. And then in draw, we're just drawing a white background. So I want to declare some constants up top that you could change depending on if you wanted to make this look different. But we know that it's 16 columns by 16 rows and the spacing is actually 10 between each rectangle. And the next thing I'm gonna do is within the setup function, I'm gonna call no loop and I'm gonna call no stroke. No loop means that the draw, draw function is only called once, whereas normally it would be called, uh, I think 60 frames per second or whatever you set the frame rate as. And the no stroke means that we're not drawing any sort of border around those color boxes, those cells there. Now, the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do in the draw function is set a variable for our cell width. This is defining the width of each little rectangle there. And the way I'm gonna do this is I know like, say if you have two columns, then you're gonna have actually three kind of spacing areas, right? And so you always have one extra spacing area for the number of columns that you have. So you can see we're adding one to columns here and then multiplying that by the spacing and then we're subtracting that all from width. So what's that saying is this whole kind of expression here is getting the available space for us to put grids or for us to put grid cells in. And then we're just dividing that by the number of columns such that we know how wide each cell will be. And then looking at Richter's painting, it looked like the cell height was just about like uh, half of the cell width. So just an easy division by two there. And now we're gonna set up a nested for loop to set up our grid system. So these are really key anytime you're working with grids in code, uh, these nested for loops help you traverse like both rows and columns. So we can see that we are taking a variable J starting at zero and going to the number of rows that we set up here is 16. And then we have a variable I and setting that to in increment by one each time up until the value of columns or columns minus one. And within our nested for loop, now we're gonna get our X and Y coordinate. And our X coordinate is gonna be defined by the cell width plus the spacing times I. So for I of zero, it's just gonna be pretty much at zero plus spacing. And then for I of one, it's going to be at the cell width. It's gonna like take into account the first cell width plus spacing, shift it over by one, and then add one more bit of spacing to that. So we able to get our X value pretty easily that way. And the Y is pretty much going to be the same thing, but instead of using I, we're using that J value here. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and fill. And for this fill, just to start, I'm gonna get a random value between zero and 255. and this is setting the red value, so some random value between 0 and 255 for red, green, and then blue here. And then lastly, we'll call the rect function, which is P5JS way of saying, okay, time to draw a rectangle, and we're going to pass it the x and y coordinates, as well as our cell width and the cell height. And now if I click play, we can see we've got a Richter painting here. And if I kind of uh, make that bigger, this kind of looks like a, a little bit bigger, and I can draw those, those rectangles larger. Now, if I'm looking at the colors against what Richter had, I can see like mine just feels a little bit brighter and a little bit off. So what I would do here is I would play with color mode in P5 and by default it's set to RGB, but we can set it to HSB, hue, saturation, brightness. All right, if we look at the P5 docs for color mode, we can see that when we set color mode to HSB, this lets us use the HSB system. And by default, this color mode uses the values 360 for hue, 100 and 100 for saturation and brightness. And then one, this is for the alpha channel. Uh, you can also use HSL, but we'll use HSB. So back in our code, we've already set color mode to HSB. And down here, you know, if we hit play, we're going to start getting some, a little bit of different coloring just because of the different color mode. Uh, but we wanna set our hue value random between zero and 360. And then these are all 255. So we'll set 100 as the max for those. So if we hit play, now we're getting some very different uh, kind of results. So we might wanna play with the saturation and brightness here. So rather than saturating down to zero where I'm getting a lot of grays, maybe saturate between 50 and 100. And then for brightness, we'll do the same between 50 and 100. 
I may have gotten this in the wrong direction, but now we can already see, yep, it's too bright. Maybe if I try from zero to 50 here, then that's gonna bring the darkness way down. So we'll do something like between 10 and uh, 80 and play there. And this is starting to look quite a bit nicer. I'm, I'm liking this already. So you can just kind of play with these values to get something that you think looks nice uh, as far as your random color palettes go. All right, hope you had some fun playing around with code today to generate some art in the style of famous Gerhard Richter. Now, if you like this, be sure to check out the clonable below so you can see how to do it in Webflow. And then also be sure to check out whatever video YouTube recommends over here, because if you like that one, then you'll probably like this one. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.